Welcome to Precision Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 18 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss updating data in MVC. Please watch part 17 before proceeding with this video. In part 17, we implemented this edit view. At the moment, the problem is, if we click on the save button, we get an error stating the resource cannot be found. And that makes sense because at the moment, the employee controller class doesn't have an edit action method that responds to HTTP POST operation. In this video, we'll discuss correcting this issue. So obviously, when we click on the save button here, we want to save the changes that we made to this employee to the database table. So obviously, the first thing to do is to implement a stored procedure that can update the database table TPL employee. And to speed things up, I have the stored procedure already implemented here. So if you look at the stored procedure, it's very straightforward. It has all these input parameters, ID, name, gender, city, and date of birth. And then what are we doing within the body? You know, we are simply updating this table, setting name to name, gender to gender, city to city, and date of birth to date of birth, where ID is equal to whatever is the ID of the employee. So very simple and straightforward stored procedure here. So that's our first step. Obviously, the second step is to modify our employee business layer. At the moment, if you look at this employee business layer, we've got one property here, employees, which is going to return all the employees. And we also have add employee method. If you give it a new employee object, it's going to add that or insert that employee into the database table. Now let's go ahead and add a method which can actually save employee details. So let's call it public void save employee and this is going to take an employee object as the parameter and then we want this um, function to invoke the stored procedure that we have just implemented save employee and pass you know the employee object property values uh, as the values for the parameters of the stored procedure so to speed things up I have this function already implemented. So let me copy that and paste it here. Now this is a very straightforward ADO.NET code. We discussed about ADO.NET in a very great detail in ADO.NET video series. So please watch those videos. So what are we doing here? We're using the configuration manager class to read the connection string from web.config file. And then using that connection string, we are building our SQL connection object. And notice the SQL command. It's nothing but the stored procedure that we have just implemented. And then we are telling the command object it's of type stored procedure by using this command type property. And then the rest of the code is simply preparing the SQL parameters, you know, ID, name, gender, city, and date of birth. And then we open the connection and execute the command. That's it. So that's our second step. Finally, we need to implement our employee controller. So with an employee controller, we need to implement an edit action method that can respond to HTTP POST operation. So let me copy this method. And we want this controller action method to respond to HTTP POST operation. So let's change this attribute to HTTP POST. And we want this action method to receive the employee object. So when we click on save, whatever you know data that we have here, this will be automatically posted to the server. And then the model binder in MVC is going to receive those posted form values. And then it's going to populate this object for us automatically. And then when it's doing that, the default model binder, when it's binding the posted form data, if there are any errors, you know, when it's doing that binding, we can detect those errors using model state object. So if model state dot is valid, if that property returns true, then we know for sure there are no model validation errors. In that case, we are creating a new employee business layer here. And then this object, employee business layer object, has got a method, save employee method. So all we are doing here is passing the save, uh, employee object to the save employee method, which is going to save those employee details to the database table. And once that is done successfully, we want to redirect the user to the index action. So return redirect to action, and to which action we want to redirect index action, which is going to list all the employees there. 
okay and then if this model state object returns false then we know there are some model validation errors in which case we want the user to remain on the same view and then display those model validation errors so that the user get an opportunity to fix those errors and then submit that form back so let's go ahead and run this and see if it's going to work as expected all right let's navigate to the index action and let's click on edit so Mary at the moment is female. Let's change the gender to male and let's save it and see if it's going to work as expected. So Mary's gender is male and we can check our database table as well. So Mary's gender is male. Okay. On the other hand, let's edit that once again. Let's, you know, enter some text for date of birth. So I'm entering test. Now remember, date of birth is of type date time. Now this cannot be parsed or converted to date time data type. Okay, so obviously there will be a model validation error. And when we click save, look at that, I get this error. The value test is not valued for valid for date of birth. Okay, and why are we getting that error? Because look at this, this property will return false. And then we are returning the same view, and that view is going to display that employee object where the model state validation has failed and we get the error message as expected. Okay. On the other hand, let's say I, I don't want to populate the city itself and then click on that. Look at that, the city field is required. And you remember, if you remember, in the previous session, we have decorated this employee object. You know, look at these properties. We have decorated them with required attribute. So model state object knows all of these properties need to have values. And if they're missing them, again, we have this errors property um, on this model state object. Actually, let's run this and debug this. So how is this model state object keeping track of those errors? Um, so let's navigate to employee index. Let's put a breakpoint within our employee controller here, which responds to the HTTP post operation. Let's click on edit. Let's say test, okay, for date of birth, and let's blank out city there and click on save so it drops into this function um, and then let's press F10 there so model state dot is valid that is false as expected now if we go into the immediate window and if I go to model state of date of birth and dot value look at that that's the value we tried to enter into you know uh, that date of birth text box the attempted value is uh, you know test and then if we go to model state and if we just index that with date of birth and look at this errors count is one meaning there is one error as far as that property is concerned and if you not want to know what that error is you can simply look at that use the errors property and index that so the value test is not valued for uh, date of birth. So this model state object has this errors property which we can use you know if we want to change any of the error messages that are associated um, you know with that property as well. We'll discuss more about that in a later video session. All right. On this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.